All right, guys. Let me catch up to you. So, 13. This is both no. Is each group of data the same? No. We can see that, right? All right, guys, everybody, everybody. Every person, every organic entity. Okay. Um, are the data sets all the same? No. Okay, we know that. We know that they're not the same. If I just gave somebody my the analysis you did on each group from number one, the first thing they would probably say to you is, were they all the same? Because you everything was 13, wasn't it? So my point here might be kind of like, so just figuring out the measure of center of a set of data is not good enough. What we're trying to do, what I'm trying to get us to be able to do is to summarize data sets with two numbers. One number is going to be the center. And we're actually going to pick the mean to do that. Even though we know the mean sometimes have issues, it's most of the time the best thing to use for the center. And I want a different number that helps me distinguish something else about the sets of data. So I can give somebody just two pieces of information and they can summarize 800 data points. So they don't have to look at the whole list. I can just tell them these two things. They're like, oh, okay, I got that. That's what, the, that's what this sheet is trying to get us towards. It's trying to show you we got all these different measures of center, but they're not good enough to distinguish. They all say the same thing, even though we know they're not the same. So I gotta develop another number that captures this other thing that's not the same. So that's why I made you do this next thing. And I think you guys got 10801, right? Then what's the next one? Two, two, no. 12421. And then uniform is what that's called. And then I like it. Yes. They're all symmetric. By the way, do you guys notice how, right here for example, do you see how many 13 go down by two from group A to group B? Yes? That 13 went down by two, yes? Didn't this 13 go up by two? Didn't this 13 go up by two? Do you remember that whole discussion we had about the average, I think it was yesterday, where you get, we're down by seven and up by one, so what do I need for the next? You guys remember that at all? I know it was going to have the same average because I made the numbers all still come out to the same sum because if I took one number down by, I made another number go up by that much. So it was still going to add up to be the same thing. Okay, maybe, maybe. That's one little thing to recognize as to why all the centers were like, 13? Okay, I kind of, I forced that, of course. Um, but, so these should all be symmetric. It's just the way I set it up. Do they always have to be no, no? But for this problem, I made them sort of, you guys see what I mean by symmetric? Up, down, the same way, right? This one's really symmetric. Always the same. Up, down, up, down, up, right? All right, so. So the number that I want to use, there are a lot of candidate numbers. We are learning what other people picked. So it's not, we can't pick whatever we want to, unfortunately, right? But what they picked was pretty damn good. I might be a little biased at all. The main difference I see between these, just looking at this, and if and some of you guys got to this yourself, is how spread out the information is. So this one, the data points hug the middle. They hug the mean. And just a couple of them got adventurous, right? So this one is not very spread out at all. And then this is a little more spread out. You guys see what I'm saying? More left home and went further. And they, they didn't really get too far away, did they? But they did at least leave home. So the parents are like, thank the gods. Here, they left home and kind of evenly distributed themselves. And then here, they left home and went, I really want to get further, right? Which I can relate to. Uh, is that all right? You guys get that? So it's the spread. No. What's up? 
Oh, no, no, yes. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Don't look at me and shake your head. No, that make me feel bad. <laughs> so it's how spread. So if I could get a number, a number that tells me how spread out data is, I could tell you the mean and that spread number, and you have a really good idea of what the data looks like without me having to give you, here's 800 pieces of data. <clears throat> you know, I can just say, here's a number and another number, and you know now basically what it looks like. So if I calculate this spread number for this, it's gonna be the smallest out of all of these. And this one is gonna be the biggest because this is more spread out and this is the least spread out. So I'm gonna, the next thing we're gonna do before I let you out of here today is we're gonna develop a formula that will tell us what this spread amount is. What do you think, uh, if all the numbers were 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 right? Wouldn't all the measures in center have been the same except for mid-range, but, right? Would it still been the same mean, the same median, same mode, right? What do you think the spread is for that? Zero. 13, 13, yeah, zero, beautiful. So if I create a formula for a number that's supposed to represent the spread, it better come out to zero if they're all the same. And then the more that they are different, the bigger that number should get to represent that, and now they're getting more and more spread out. <coughs> okay, all right. all right, here's another situation. All right, I know you guys probably know about like that website, Rate My Professors. Okay. I remember, <laughs> it was on the East Coast when it first came out, and I went on there the next day after they had told everybody about it, and I could tell some of my colleagues had rated themselves. It was really fun. Um, so you got that, which I'm just gonna withhold. Uh, the one thing I'll say is if I don't get some bad reviews nowadays, I feel like I'm not doing a good job because I, I have bad students in some of my classes, not here, uh, that I wanna get bad reviews from because they're not gonna like me because I'm not gonna be as easy as they want me. But yeah, you do. Yeah. And you have like a lot of points. Everyone talks about how funny you are, which is very accurate. No, I had a series of, of hit jobs, I think, for my upper level stuff. Really they hated me because I dared to make them understand some stuff they were supposed to know to come in. But oh well, I'm evil that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, right. There's another website that I'm not going to tell you about, and thank God it costs money, where you can go get grade distributions of all instructors, because that's actually public domain knowledge. You could call the school up and say, I want the grade distribution for this teacher. I don't know how they would do it, but it is public domain knowledge. So, do you know what it is? Okay. So, let's say I have a teacher, two teachers. Everything about them, the rate my professor is exactly the same. They're exactly the same, except one teacher gives always uh, from a B to a D. So they never give A's and never give F's. And you're at university where a D means pass for real, right? Right. A community college, a C is what you need to transfer. Once you get to a university, you get D's and everything and get a degree. <laughs> well, no, not quite, but there's still some things. But you can get a D and a lot more shit and still get a degree. Think about that the next time you're going across the bridge. Now, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the one instructor gets from B to D. And another instructor gives from A to F. They both average a C. So the only difference then is in the spread of data. So if I just told you they both give a C average to students, that's not going to help you make a decision. Can anybody tell me which one would you pick? The B through D or the A through F? A through F. Now, what I, the thing I want you to realize is I would pick the A through F if I knew I was going to kick that course's ass. Because I'm like, this dude is waiting for God to show up, and then even then it's going to get an A minus, right? Or whatever D that you would appreciate better. Um, so this guy is giving A through F. So if I know I'm going to kick that course's ass, I'm going to take that. This guy, B through D, if I know the course is going to be weird as shit, right? And I'm like, not really sure. I, I want the guy that doesn't fail anybody, unfortunately. Oh, well. They're out there. You guys kind of with me? Yeah. So without that extra piece of information, I couldn't make an informed decision. So what if I went somewhere and I needed um, a bunch of wood cut real fast? 
and I had this one group that could do, okay, we can, we can do an average of this, and we're off by like an inch sometimes within our, we're gonna do it really fast, so we can be off by an inch from what you want. And there's other companies like, we can be, we'll be off by just an eighth of an inch. So the spread is a lot less. With that extra information, I'm like, I'm gonna go with these guys. Maybe it's gonna cost more money, but at least my house is not gonna be all like, right? You guys kind of with me? So center and spread gives me an idea of what the data looks like without having to see the complete list of all the freaking data. <coughs> Those two numbers are crazy important. In fact, this whole semester, every time we learn a new way of somebody giving me data, we have to first learn how do I calculate the mean, how do I calculate this spread number. Okay. So. Woo! I'm gonna give myself a smaller set of data. I'm not gonna use these. I don't wanna use 10 numbers. Okay. So let's, I'm gonna give us two sets of data. Uh, what you got, Jeff? data first, and then I'm going to do this data next, and maybe I'll have you guys do this data here. I'm going to say this right now, these are both populations. You with me? Totally. Okay, maybe. Okay. So I'm trying to get, now, now let's, let's agree on this definition. And because of time and because you guys were not born 400 years ago, um, I'm gonna try to push you in the direction that people decided on a long time ago. The spread of a set of data, I want it to be officially this. Let me just say it and see if you agree with me that it makes sense. I want it to be the average distance that the data points get from the mean on average. So if they were all the same number, if they, if all my numbers were five, 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 how far do the data points get away from the average? Zero. zero. So this spread number here would be zero. It's the average distance that the numbers get away from the mean, what I called home up there, right? So this is not gonna be zero because a few things get away from the average. Is everybody cool with the average of these still being five? Do you guys see that? That went down two, that went up two, so the average is still five. If you don't believe me, what do they add to me? 25, and what's the mean gonna be then? Oop, it's a population. Still freaking five, of course, right? Wait, by average, you mean mean? Yes, I like that. So I will use both of those, <laughs> but we understand that. You said you weren't gonna use, or I thought you said like average doesn't exist. That's so why in the English, <laughs> We use the word average to mean the word mean. Okay. I will kind of use both because you guys are used to the word average. I like it. I don't want to be so pretentious and always force myself to mean those are not. Um, okay. So if I want, so so ask, answer me this. If I wanted to know the average age of everybody in here, I have to first do what? Collect ages. Collect ages. If I want to know the average shoe size, I have to first collect shoe sizes. Here I want to know the average distance from the mean. So I better first figure out a bunch of average shoe size, need a list of shoe sizes. Average age, need a list of ages. Average distance from the mean, I need a list of distances, distances from the mean. <laughs> yes? Right? How do you find the distance between things? I subtract them. Now, some of you guys might realize distance in algebra is absolute value. I'm going to talk to you why we don't do that in a minute. Let's do this first. The mean is five, right? So we cool, everybody. So what's the x minus the mean for this one? Minus five. And then these guys are going to be. They stay at home. Seven minus five. Two. What do those add to me? Zero. So I'm never see that sucks. 
do you understand how the mean, when I do all the data values minus the mean, these will always add to be zero? Because you're gonna have equal negatives, equal positives. Even if it isn't symmetric, it will always be so. So that's not useful. It's always gonna be zero. How the hell do I use that? So I could use absolute value. You guys remember absolute value? What's the absolute value do? I like it. It's the distance from zero, so it makes everything positive because it's distance. If you say you're negative four feet away from me, I'm like, are you in me? Great. No. Let's see if anybody gets that reference. No. Um, but what's the absolute value look like? You guys remember what the absolute value looks like if I graph it? Oh shit. Who remembers this? Anybody? Anybody ever graphed it? It's like a V. It's like a what? V. v. Choom, right? Math does not like hard turns like this. If you were in this plane, you would be dead after this. <laughs> all right, boom, you're all against this side. You're all dead. <laughs> now, this is a really silly kind of surface level thing, but this is basically part of the reason why we don't use it. Weird things happen there. It's what we call a kink, like in a pose, right? So what's another way to make all of these become positive instead of asking that? Square. square. Okay, good. If I'm going to square these now, at the end, I'm going to have to square root. I love it. Because if this is number of dogs people own, this is going to be square dogs. What the shit kind of creatures? <laughs> I got a square dog. <laughs> Little Picasso dog. No. So if I square all these, I get. So what I'm going to do. So already see why I had to square. I'm going to take this away for right now. We'll bring that back. I want this number. Let me show you the symbol for this number. For population, standard deviation. This is the term for the spread. Standard deviation. And while I'm thinking about it, this is the deviation. Everybody, if I say the word deviate, what does that mean? Not deviant. How much does it like deviate. How much it differs. How much it differs. So that's these are deviations then, right? And that's going to be the standard deviation, like the average deviation. You guys understand where that word comes from? Maybe, maybe. No? <laughs> Shit. I'm not sure how else to say that. So these are how much the data deviates, and I want to find the average deviation. So we just call it standard deviation. And you're like, let me just shake my head so you keep on. Um, the symbol we use for standard deviation of a population is that. That's lowercase sigma, believe it or not. Uppercase sigma, summation symbol, lowercase sigma, R with a tummy. Right. So you draw, start at the tummy, you go around. So depending on my mood, I make fat ones, skinny ones. But it isn't an R. You guys with me? It is lowercase sigma. Just like a bench over square root symbol. Yeah, like an overzealous square root symbol. They got a little extra curve going on. I like it. Now. Remember, the last thing I have to do is going to have to be square rooting this sucker, so that's why I put a square in this guy. It kind of just reminds me that I'm not done yet. All right, let me ask you this. All right, so pretty cool the fact that we had a square here. Wait, why do we do that again? Because these are negative. Oh. Absolute values are freaky. So the other way to make a positive is square. And what's a parabola look like? What's a, what's a squared look like? Nine. Now that plane, oh, we're going to turn around everybody. Everybody's alive. This one is, <laughs> we're all dead, right? And I know that sounds like really silly, but to be honest, there's a lot of math about this is a freaky ass thing to handle mathematically. That sudden turn. You want a nice turn. Yeah, all right. Now again, what am I trying to get here? What's the spread supposed to be? The average distance that the data points get from the mean. So I want to, and, and I'm going to first get the average squared distance, and then I'm going to square root. So pretty cool with that. So I want this to be the average distance all the data points get away from the mean. Why do we square root, root it after? Like we 
Because again, right now, if this is the number of dogs people own, oh, this yeah. is square dogs, right? <laughs> so I don't want to say, you know, spread in that was like seven square dogs. What? Yeah. Can you just put them on like carpet? I want to get some square dogs and put them down. Like, yeah. What? Sorry. Yes, maybe, maybe. I really want you guys. I need the distance and I want to add them all up and divide by how many there are. Oh shit, they always add to zero. Oh, I better take the negative away. Best way to do it is to square them, which means I got a square root at the end to kill them, right? <coughs> so if I want to find the average of these, how do I do that? Add them all up. What would that symbol look like? Summation of these. What is that? When I add these up, of course I get. It's amazing. And over here is the formula now. So I'm going to add these up and divide by how many there are. Really, I know there's a little bit of freakiness in this problem, but you, when you look at the formula, you can see the idea of average. Adding stuff up and dividing by how many there are. That's an average. Average what? Average this. So what was, this was the average of the x's, right? What would this be? Average, average of, the of the y's. So what's this? The average of the square distances. So then when I take a square root, I'll get the actual average distance. <coughs> so let's do this. This, by the way, this is called by itself, before I take a square root, this is called the variance. After I take a square root, it's called the standard deviation. So let's fill this in. What is this? Here's where you guys really have to get used to how this works. You're so used to algebra plugging stuff in. But I know what that whole damn thing is. That whole top is eight. I'm not going to put shit here. Because what does this represent? A bunch of things. So I got nothing to put here. But this whole thing is 8. And what's n? 5. Just 8 divided by 5 is 1.6, right? And then you square root it. Add them up. Yeah, what does this mean? Add up these. There's these. What happens? What? Four plus four. Four minus five is, I mean, eight minus five is three. All right. What is x? Why is x eight? These are all x. X is all of these. There's no single thing to put here. Really? All right. These are the x minus the means, right? These are the x minus the means squared, right? What does it say to do? <laughs> Add up those. What are these? Add them up. And I know it does feel different, but it's because we have a whole... Whenever I see this in a formula or something, I have to say I need a bunch of those. Do I have a bunch of those? Yep. Then I add them up. There's not shit to put in here. There isn't. When did I put stuff in here? For each row. Because x changes from each row. So what does this really say to do? Get a bunch of those. I did. Add them up. X is an 8. X is all this. Oh shit. I like it. And of course, that's, that's the variance. So what's the standard deviation? Or somebody say 0.4. No, no, no. No. 1.264? So 5. Standard deviation always rounded to at least three decimal places. Yes, sir. When, uh, when we take a test on this, if I 
I put the original, like they call them X, in my calculator, and it gives me that standard deviation. Standard deviation. You must be getting to that. Because <coughs> it gets. The what right work right did you do? Nothing. You put a bunch of numbers in your calculator, and then it did all the work. So I'm going to give you a calculator. Well, your calculator's not enrolled in my class, so it can't get the grade. I know I'm being an asshole right now, and I don't care. Uh, you're going to have to do all this shit. I'm really sorry. Just until after test one. After test one, I will allow you to just pull that number out of the calculator. But I'm crazy. I like you guys to get a feel for what's going into that number instead of just buttons. Because when you take statistics and you do everything with buttons, you don't have a connection at all. And some of you guys I know are like, I don't want that connection, man. I just want to pass this damn thing. <laughs> but you're, it's too bad for you. I want you to understand the shit too. Okay. All right, let's see how much time we got. Very little. So let's try this other set of data. So what this means is, on average, the data points get that far away from the middle. It's not perfect because we had to square and square root. Those are freaky. But if I did this other set of data, so let me let me take this away. If I do this other set of data here, what I had up here earlier, is it going to be bigger or smaller than that? For this data, is it going to be bigger or smaller than that for the standard deviation? Bigger. Why? Because this data is more spread out. It has more data points that get away from the mean. Try to fill these in. Do it. Try to fill in these columns for this data. The mean is still 5, right? So as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to let us out of here. Oh, while you're doing that, let me give you the, the practice test. I'm going to have it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Is very cool with this so far? Mm -hmm. Alright, 3 minus 5, 4 minus 5. Square these. And this is why I say when you make these kind of tables, tell yourself what the hell you're doing. <laughs> Don't just put 10 here. Put the sum of this is 10. Is that cool? Why do you do that for yourself? Because now I know to put a 10 wherever the hell I see this thing. Because that's what that is. I'm not putting stuff in for X or you. I know what the whole thing is. You all right? So that is 10. So here I'm going to replace that with just say it for me. 10. 
And the n is still, of course, 5. So when you take a square root, 14414, blah, blah, blah. And what was the other one we just got? One point. I erased it and I shouldn't have. One point. One point two six five. So this one was a little bit bigger because it's a little more spread out. So that number we've created <laughs> is the measure of how spread out the data is. So the first thing we'll do tomorrow is talk about the slight change we got to make if it's a if it's a sample, not a population. There's one little tweak we got to make. <laughs> and then I'll show you the shortcut how to do this in the cat letter. Don't forget your IDs. Please come trade me. Yes. So I was just 